The blue goose is back! All right, so it's been a couple weeks since we've had the blue goose in the shop. We've had a couple other side quests that we've finished off, but this is my 1958 Chevy Apache fleet side known as blue goose. This video, we're just gonna be trying to hopefully get a couple things buttoned up, loose ends. I think I've got a door unlocked, so hopefully we're gonna be snagging that this week too, because we're missing a driver's door as you've seen so i would like to also maybe try to potentially get some different tires on this thing because they are all in pretty rough shape so i've got these 16 and a half inch tires and wheels here they came off my camper van which is a dodge so it should be the same lug pattern i've got a problem with these things are not wanting to go up on bead and when i got the camper every one of them was flat and i just had a heck of a time so i just opted Hopped on Facebook Marketplace, found a good set of 16 inches, which is a lot easier to find tires for anyway. So today we're gonna try the old brake clean and uh, fire method, see if we can't pop this thing up real quick. You might wanna get back for this one, Layla. So we'll be using carb cleaner. Looks like she worked. Might have used a little too much, but oh, she just fell back off. Now we just got a tire on fire. Ah! Give her another shot, I guess. I know you're supposed to be putting air on these as they go, so let me slide over here and get some air real quick. Round two. And this is sketchy. <laughs> no dice. Let me regroup. Okay, I've got a ratchet strap around this unit right now. Um, and looking, it actually seated the bead on the bottom side. So I'm hoping maybe I can pull this thing up enough now that we got this thing ratchet strapped. And hopefully it'll actually pop this thing up on the bead enough. I actually need another <laughs> set of hands while I hold this up. Let me see here. Oh yeah, baby. Got that old stank water on me now. Here we go. All right, now that we got that going our way, I'm gonna go ahead and try to release this thing a little bit. All right, now that we got our tire, we need to get the old one off, which these are split rims, so just even being around them kind of makes me nervous. My gosh, these things have to be tubed. <laughs> They're just so terrible. Wheel bearing's good. I don't know how good those pads are going to be inside of there, though, once we finally get to doing brakes on this thing. Hopefully this thing fits after going through all that trouble. I guess we could have checked that beforehand. Look at that. Huh. I think this thing has too much of an offset. <laughs> oh. Yep, it's hitting right on the tie rod right now. Oh, amazing. I'm gonna do this the redneck way. Since I really just want these things to roll around for now, I'm just gonna throw some washers on those lug nuts to space this thing out. All right, I just put two washers on every other stud. We'll see what that does. And then 
in we'll snip around there ain't like we're going to florida in this thing just trying to yard drive it and just make it a little bit more presentable Ooh. well we're going to need more spacing than just two so Maybe I can find a third and I think we would be in business. Alrighty, only three more to go and we'll have some tires for show. That's a mud tire right there. God oh, dang. That's my security system. Alright, so a big step in the right direction on getting the truck looking a little bit better. These wheels are dirty as heck, so they don't look killer. It doesn't have a bunch of May Pops on it now, so I feel good about that. Next thing I might dive into, I'm going to look into that gas tank, see if we can't get that thing to where we can crack it open and potentially see if it's rusted out all the heck, which more than likely it's going to be. But I'd like to at least dig into this thing and see if it is. on this thing for some reason. seen better days but I think I have a quick and easy cheap solution for that sitting right over yonder all right I guess I just don't feel like wrenching on anything tonight maybe but I just got to playing around with this sweet patina century polish on this little portion right here I'm just gonna hit this whole door and probably most of this fender because it's got good blue paint on it and I do know that this thing is rougher than 80 grit sandpaper but you can see here it really brought that out it's pretty cool so let's get the blue goose at least one side where it's actually vibrant blue and i'm gonna throw you guys on a quick time lapse i'm gonna scrub this whole thing down until my arm falls off and see what we got all right i guess we need to get back to something halfway productive let's go uh i think i'm just going to try to scope this tank um this truck has a lot of really weird fasteners i think they they're called clutch fasteners or something i don't know let me see if i can show you here it's right there it almost looks like a stripped out screw but what it is it's like a dovetail and a dovetail and there's a bit that goes down in there i do not have it and i don't i don't have any of them i guess there's multiple sizes of them uh, when we pulled that transmission tunnel off this thing, it had them as well. And I had never seen them in my life, and my buddy Brent informed me on kind of what they were. So, yeah, I don't really want to try to mar up that sending unit and not ever be able to get it out. So, see if we can't run my dirt cheap Timu scoop, my dirt cheap Timu scope down that thing and see if we can't see, I don't know, maybe if it's rusty or whatever. So, this is my little timu scope here you can see my ugly mug on it it's got a little led action on it uh, if you haven't watched that video i'll leave it below but i think amazon's got these same scopes and everything got this one from timu i think i paid like 12 bucks for this thing and it is handy as heck uh oh we're in some gasoline it looks pretty gnarly pretty nasty hopefully you can see it 
see our light shining it's reflecting back at us so that's some gas but the filler neck itself I mean it doesn't look too bad Woo! she stinks though definitely stinky all right so we acquired a new door yesterday it's been patched and it's rough don't get me wrong but I think it's gonna be perfect for what we've got going on for right now I would love to find a blue patina door to match it I guess we could fake patina this thing I'd rather just find a blue one in the long term. I just want to, I got this thing back up to the house because I want to get this thing cleaned up. Got so many people commenting that this thing is a lost cause and all this and that. So I want to go ahead, get this thing cleaned up. And I want to show you kind of the vision of what I've got of this truck. And I think after I clean it up and put the sweet patina on it, maybe you'll see that it's not just as rough as it looks with all this surface rust. So this wash is going to entail some so fresh, so clean from Sweet Patina. I got a little scotch right here. And then we've got an air show going on this weekend. There's the Blue Angels. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to show you there, but the Blue Angels flew right over the house, so it got a little noisy. But we're gonna be using a little bit of this Ajax bleach. It's kind of like your um, Comet wash. You see like Dave Freiberger kind of made famous, I guess, and stuff. I've never tried that. Uh, Blake from Sweet Patina, he always tells me to go with this so fresh, so clean. I don't have a whole lot of it, so bringing in some Ajax. You know, they say even Ajax can't take that off, but let's see if we can take this off. Okay, so arguably, the bed is probably the worst part of this truck. So we're gonna start our way in here, wet this thing down, throw you on a bit of a time lapse. We're gonna work our way around this truck. this thing all scrubbed down I'm gonna go around with this thing with some sweet patina patina sauce and it'll really just soak into this rust and everything like that and just give it a lot better finish and later on we could even go back and probably even wet sand on this thing a little bit because it's still a little rough but a lot of that stuff we're just not gonna get out but once we get this sweet patina patina sauce on this thing it's really gonna bring out a lot of those imperfections and just make this thing look a little bit slicker. All right, we're all sauced up. Usually I'll wipe that back down but since we've got such heavy patina here in the back, I guess patina is maybe not the right word for it. It's a lot of rust. It's heavy on top here. I'm just gonna let that soak in. Man, it really brought that thing out. <laughs> also this door, that thing, it's got a ton of metal flake in it. It might be kind of hard to see, but that's pretty cool. Uh, it is streaky on that because that is actual decent paint on the top half of that, so. It gets a little streaky on that. That's why you want to go back with like a quick detailer or something like that just to even all that out. But everything's looking really good on this old truck. And I know a lot of you are probably like, oh man, that thing is still just yard art to me. And that's fine. I get that. But to me, it's going to be a cool truck. I'm going to cruise it and enjoy the heck out of it. So at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. It is all sauced up. Got the wheels cleaned up here too. They're looking a lot better. But I think it already looks a million times better in my opinion. That rust isn't all chalky looking and just looking terrible. Need to source some bumpers. The angle iron. 
has got to go. But I've actually just received in the mail a master cylinder. I think that's going to be the next line of attack. I talked about getting that gas tank and everything back together, but man, I don't know. I think the direction I'm leaning towards on this thing, I don't think we're going to be using that anyways. I'm leaning pretty hard on bagging this thing. I know a lot of people are like, keep it stock and just drive it like it is, but it doesn't sound very fun to me. I think laid out on the ground would be a lot cooler. That's just me though. And I think that's a, a big thing. I think you ought to build your vehicle to how you would like to have it. I mean, don't listen to everybody else telling you. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy what you guys comment and all the recommendations you guys give me. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be the one driving this thing. So I think a full bag build would be pretty fun. And I'm thinking about even trying to get that done before the Evil Shindig, which is the 17th of next month, which is roughly... A month away. Alrighty, first thing we gotta do is try to get this daggone brake line off of here. I'm thinking we're probably maybe gonna have to get us some heat on this thing, but maybe not. There's a little rounded off already so that's not a good start yeah it's just wanting to round off so that's gonna turn into a vice grip problem i do believe need to get all this wiring off of here pretty wild most of this wiring is in decent shape for the most part put that back up there a little peanut trent on there hopefully that'll soak that up in there now so as i suspected this is going to be stuck in the line so we might be making a new line all together here <laughs> did break all the wheel cylinders all the way loose just took the bleeder all the way out of them that way once we get this thing apart and ready to go hopefully my theory is if we hit the brakes at least it won't be squirting anything out on them wheel cylinders we can maybe anything that's rested up in the lines maybe we can just shoot it straight out of them wheel cylinders just a theory i have not sure if it'll work all right i've got our master cylinder all disconnected here and everything and you can see here it's actually working now so what i'm going to try to do is try to blow back some air into this line and see if it's coming out of any of our wheel cylinders or we might just have some bad rubber hoses or something So, with that, it's telling me that we're pretty much blocked up right here. So, we probably need to go ahead and try to get this fitting off and see if we can blow either one of these directions. Woo! That's good and hot. after wrestling around underneath that truck for a while i just kind of kept going back and kind of as i suspected it was our rubber fuel line that is what finally gave up on this old truck and is what is not allowing this thing to get any fluid to any of the things i got all of the stuff on the hands but i just got three hoses ordered up looks like the front two uh, take exactly the same hose so Hopefully they're in in a couple days here. We could snag them things on. I did spray just some penetrating oil inside of our wheel cylinder. So hopefully that'll kind of soak in on that time. And maybe if they are a little bit sticky, 
that penetrating oil will at least kind of maybe break down some of that rust. But when you heard me install those wheels, the brake shoes on this thing sound really, really crunchy. So even if we get brake pressure, I'm not sure if it's even going to matter. But <sighs> it's worth a try, right? Need to wash my hands and go to bed. All right, got all of our new soft lines replaced. I didn't uh, bring you with me on any of that, but we got all three soft lines fully replaced now. Now, I did get two that were the right ones, and the three that I ordered off of Amazon, they actually came back to be the wrong ones. Got these from O'Reilly. There's the part number on that, but they worked out good. Hopefully they hold up and everything doesn't leak. That is what we're down to now. We need to pop the master cylinder off, or at least the little fill on here. Need to get our fancy door off so we can have access to that a little easier. So let's slide that thing off real quick. So like I had mentioned, I don't have any door hinges, so this thing is literally just sitting up on here right now. So I, I'm just gonna pop this thing off. So since our master cylinder is under the floor, Right here in this little hole is where you fill it. There's like a little socket head cap down in here. We'll get some more fluid in this thing. Start pumping this thing up and see if we can't get some fluid. At least getting out to the wheel cylinders. I do have the bleeders out still. Just wanna make sure we, like I was saying, maybe try to flush them lines out. I did blow them out with air, but maybe that fluid will help kinda of get her out of there too. <clears throat> A lot of first for me on this truck. I've never had a truck with the master cylinder under the floor like this, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's dry in there, but for the most part, it looks pretty clean, so that's good. Ouch. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give it a couple little pumps here. I'm not gonna get too crazy because I don't want to squirt brake fluid all over the place, but let's see if this pedal actually wants to move now, because it never has since we've had the truck. Yep. It has no return to it. I'm gonna go underneath here and make sure I didn't go ahead and unplug something. It just goes to the floor and stays. All right, so I've been pumping the heck out of this thing a little bit off camera here, and I've got the cap off still of our old one here, and I'm not seeing a single bubble when that thing's being depressed, and I did go underneath there, and it is also, everything's working, nothing's sticking on it or anything like that. You can see just some slight bubbleage, but we might be just changing that whole thing out. I got that new one like I was saying, so I thought hopefully maybe we could salvage that one, but not looking like it. <laughs> Alright, now that we got the master installed, I'm going to go ahead and throw this seat in. Actually, it came out of an OBS and it was in my 64 for a while until I got a different one in it. So, let's see if this thing can fit. I measured and I think it's going to be pretty close. Heck, that'll definitely do for now. <laughs> Alrighty, so I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. It is early o'clock on Sunday. The sun just came up a couple minutes ago. I got out here pretty early, so we got everything looking pretty solid. The seat, it'll do for now. It's a little bit big, it looks like, but it's better than sitting on that uh, milk crate and falling through that thing. But uh, I've actually got to go pick up a Explorer 88 rear end today. I think that is actually the direction I'm going to go. I'm going to put Explorer 88 in this truck and then I think I'm going to do a Mustang 2 front. It's going to be a little bit more money. I was going to do like a budget style. I wanted to put like right behind me there. I wanted to put that cross member in it from a 60 C10, but talked to a couple people and it just might end up looking a little hacked up. So 
We'll just go with the Mustang 2, I think, and weld that thing in, but forward progress on the Blue Goose nonetheless. Hopefully you're having a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. Oh man, it has been a heck of a week. Thanks for sticking in here and I'll see you on the next one.